Here I want to look in a bit more detail at named parameters and the values that are sent to them, the arguments that are sent to functions. In this example, this is in step 501 underscore functions, you can see I've got a number of functions with various named parameters. Here, the greet function takes a string, that is an array of chars, that I've called a name. That's the name of the parameter. In add, I've got two named parameters. Both of them are ints. They're divided by a comma. And the first one is called num1, the second is called num2, and so on. And when I want to call those functions, then I just pass matching values to those functions. So here, for example, I've passed two integers, 100 and 3, and they match the named int parameters in the function divide. Whereas here in the add function, and let me just go back so you can see the declaration of that up here. So in the add function, again, it takes two integers. This time I've passed to it two named variables, n1 and n2. So when those variables arrive in the function, they match the named parameters. The value of n1 is assigned to num1, the value of n2 is assigned to num2. Now, look at this example here, though. What I've done here is I've assigned the addition of num1 and num2 back to one of the named parameters, num1, and I've returned that as the value. So when that returns, I've assigned to it the total. But if I've sent the value n1, the variable n1, and it's matched by num1, what happens when I assign a new value to that named parameter? So in this case, I've got n1 equals 10, n2 equals 3. So num1 is equal to 10 here, and num2 is equal to 3. I add them together, and I assign it back to num1. Num1, remember, matched in position the variable n1. So does n1 now have the new value, that is 13, or does it retain its original value, that is 10? Well, let's see what happens when I run it. So let me build and run the project. And these are the results. Now, this line here, printf, prints out the value of n1, n2, and total. Total is the value that's returned, and that is, as I'm expecting, the result of the addition, 13. n1 and n2 are my variables here, and you can see that these remain unchanged. So even though I've assigned the result of the addition to the matching parameter num1 that matches n1 that was sent to it, the value of n1 remains as it was before that addition. So the parameter inside this function has the value assigned, and that's what's returned, but it does not affect the value of the variable, the matching variable that was sent to the function. Now, that's explained because the C language passes arguments by value. In other words, when n1 and n2 are passed to the function add, it's only their values that are sent. Here, these are the integer values 10 and 3. You can think of these values as being detached from the original variables. They're sent and they're received as copies. They are not actually references to the original variables. Now, if you've programmed in other languages, you may know that sometimes changes made to parameters inside a function can indeed change the values of any matching variables that were passed to that function. And in that case, the value of n1 would have been changed after the addition has been made to it inside the add function. Now, when that sort of thing happens, we say that the parameters were passed by reference because they refer to the original variables rather than by value, in which case the parameters are assigned the values passed from the original variables but do not directly refer to those variables themselves. Now, I'll say more about passing by reference later on. But for now, just bear in mind that when you normally send arguments 
uh, that are received as parameters in functions. It's the values that are received. So here that would be 10 and 3 rather than the variables themselves that are referred to. So the variables aren't affected by any changes made to the parameters inside the function. And in conclusion, it's probably just worth mentioning also that I've returned this uh, value of num1 here just as an illustration of the effect of passing by value rather than by reference. I wouldn't normally assign a return value to one of the parameters like this. For a simple addition, this is such a simple piece of code, I could just return the addition directly, num1 plus num2, and that's in fact very similar to what I've done in the divide function where I've returned num1 divided by num2. And for more complicated uh, examples, I would assign a local variable to return a result. For example, that's what I did in the readlin function, which you might remember from the last step, where I return the length of the string that's been read using the local variable, the integer i.